and what is now determined to definitely be a prolonged stint of boredom, I figured what better to do than to learn how to do something new. So today we're going to be going over sewing for beginners or sewing 101. Today we're going to start with the absolute fundamentals, aka the really basic stuff. So let's start off with supplies. These are what's absolutely necessary in addition to some things that you might want to pick up that maybe aren't essential in the very beginning but will definitely help you in the long run. It's actually going to depend on a few things like what your project is but I'm going to keep this as unintimidating as possible so these are the basics. And if you have it in your budget I highly recommend getting this clear roller. And if you already own a sewing machine at this point, your supplies are really not going to change. The only thing you'll need in addition are universal sewing needles for your machine and a bobbin. And while you technically need one, I actually recommend that you buy several. Now fabric is a whole nother video, but for today's purposes, I'm just using some plain white cotton. And this is also what I recommend that you practice on. So after you have your fabric, you now want to plug in your iron. Because one thing about sewing, oh, you think you're going to be doing a lot of it? No, you're going to be at that ironing board as much as you are at your actual sewing machine. The first thing that you want to do is iron your fabric. It's because you can't make a pattern out of something that isn't actually flat. And because we're using 100% cotton, I just snip it at the edge and I rip it because this is going to cut it on the grain. And like I said, fabric is a whole nother video. But just know that your fabric is made up of a weft and a warp, which run perpendicular to each other. Therefore, this weave is pretty solid. However, if you tug it on the diagonal, this is where your stretch is. So long story short, make sure that you're cutting it on the grain, aka along a straight edge. And the rest we'll get to later. For demonstration purposes, I'm first going to fold back my fabric to create a hem, just so that I'm actually sewing two pieces together. And I'm using my ruler to make sure that that hem is even. So as you can see, this is where that clear ruler really comes in handy. So now we're ready to sew, right? But first, here's how you actually thread your needle. I'm using this brand of all-purpose thread, which is probably the most common brand that you will see. You can also buy thread in heavy, but this is usually for things like jeans. If your thread is frayed like so, you may want to consider trimming it or licking it, whichever works. So I'm just gonna thread my needle and pull it until I have a bit of a tail. And what you can do is you can actually create even length so that your thread is kind of double layered. But unless you're doing embroidery, you probably really don't need a double thread. Therefore, you're just gonna pull it a couple of inches and then let it go so that it doesn't come out of your needle. Then just create a knot at the end. Or a little shortcut you can do is just to wrap the end of the threads around your finger, then bunch it up between your forefinger and your thumb and pull. And this will also create a knot, a much messier one, but it gets the job done. So to actually begin sewing, you're going to pull your needle from back to front so that your knot is hidden on the back of your work. Basically meaning this side you're not going to see it. Then you're going to create a stitch like so. However, if you have a really long thread, you don't want to go too fast. So as you guys can see, I'm taking my time so that if I get any bunching, I can catch it before I pull it all the way through. And this is very important because once you get a really tangled knot, you're not going to be able to get it out. No one's in a rush here. Remember, you don't have anywhere to go. So that's our first stitch done. So now you just continue. And my tip to you is that you use your needle as a ruler. I overlap it on the previous stitch so that I can make sure that the second one is also straight and going in the same direction. And as you can see, I've left some space, actually quite a bit of space between my first and my second stitch. However, this is just so that you can see it well. So you don't have to have this much of a gap. If you want to, that's okay. But generally speaking, you do want to keep it short because that means that you're going to have more stitches per square inch and therefore more strength holding your fabric together. So you'll see here that I've varied the length of my stitch and the spaces in between. So it's up to you. You can create whatever stitch length that you want to based on your project. And once you get comfortable, you can even weave your needle through your fabric like I'm doing here to make the time pass faster. So again, you can see the gaps that I have between each one of my stitches. These vary because I just can't see what I'm doing. But do make sure that you keep checking on your work to make sure that it's as consistent as possible. So this is what you want to aim for. My stitches aren't too long, but they're also not too short. Pretty even distance between my stitches. So this is something that you can mimic or recreate at home just to practice your stitches while you're, say, watching TV. And just in case anyone's curious, this is what the back of my work looks like. And if you're having trouble with consistency, then maybe looking at this side could be more helpful than looking at the front. 
So you've done a successful row of straight stitches, but how do you finish it? Again, working on the back, you're gonna sneak a little bit of your fabric. I'm really just grabbing the back layer. So from the front, you can't see anything because I'm not actually going through both. And then instead of pulling my thread all the way through, I'm gonna stop short just a little bit and insert my needle through the loop that I just created. Then complete my pull. And this is gonna create a knot, which is gonna keep my stitches secure. However, just to be safe, I'm gonna do a second one. So this time I'm gonna insert my needle behind the knot that I just created and then just do the exact same thing. Now we can cut our thread as close to that knot as possible. So those are the basics. However, we're now going to apply that to an actual seam. Your fabric essentially has a right side and a wrong side. And the perfect example of this is a fabric that has a pattern, in which case the wrong side will appear much duller in color or in pattern. Even the color palette may be slightly off. you're always going to place your fabric right sides together. I've put an R for right and a W for wrong so that you guys can better see which I'm working on. When sandwiching your pattern pieces together, you first want to make sure that they are aligned from edge to edge. And to keep them that way, you can use pins. You want to place them perpendicular to your seam like this and not parallel to the edge of your fabric like this because this is the same direction that you'll be working so it'll just get in the way and if you're sewing on a sewing machine then this can be dangerous because you might break your needle so place them perpendicular to your raw edge spaced evenly apart and you may not need many pins point is just to hold your fabric securely enough and it doesn't budge where you need it the most in case you're not quite sure if you've put your pattern pieces together the right way to check all you have to do is open your fabric so now I know that I'm sewing on the wrong side and that any stitches that I create are going to be on the wrong side of the fabric. So you won't see it. So to create this straight stitch, I'm going to take this to my sewing machine. And this comes with two cords, the power cord and the foot pedal. The first step is to create a bobbin of the thread that you're using. So to do that, I just follow the directions that are on the sewing machine. That process is going to look a little something like this. Then I push this to the right, which tells the machine that I want it to spin the bobbin instead of focusing on the needle. And when I'm done, I switch it back. And now we can actually thread the machine. And again, I'm just following the instructions, but no matter what machine I've had, this is pretty much always the same. So if you don't have these instructions, just follow what I'm doing. And my machine actually has a needle threader, which I don't use. So now we're gonna take that bobbin that we created and put it into the bobbin case. I'm gonna first position my thread to the back of my machine. And the last step is to catch my bobbin. So I insert the needle, which loops your top thread around your bobbin and pulls it out from the base. And holding that thread is very important because what I just described, you guys didn't see at all. And if you're having difficulty, then you wanna lift your presser foot as much as you can so that you can easily grab it. And then that I'm too gonna pull to the back of my sewing machine along with my top thread. So now we're actually ready to get started, but first I need to determine how much seam allowance I want to give myself. So that's what these markings are on the side of the presser foot. Just keep in mind that these numbers will be affected by the position of your needle if you have more than one for a straight stitch, which is what I'm showing you guys here now. As you can see, one of them positions the needle in the middle while the other positions the needle to the left. All you have to do is position your work at a point where the needle can be inserted into the fabric. So it's near the top, but it's not past the edge. And lower your presser foot. You're going to start sewing a few stitches with your foot on the pedal. Then you're going to press the back stitch button or lever on your sewing machine. So that as the name implies, it sews backwards. This is going to secure the stitches that you just place so that they don't come out. So basically this is the equivalent to tying a knot like we did when we were hand stitching. Then you can continue sewing forward again. I'm taking my time so that I can pull my pins out as I go. But if you're not comfortable, of course, feel free to stop sewing and not sew over them. We're going to do the same thing that we did at the beginning. You want to do a back stitch before you actually finish the seam. Now, in the event that you make a mistake, this is where your seam ripper comes in handy. And what most people try to do is rip out each stitch individually. 
And while this is effective, it's also time consuming. So what I do is I flip my work over to the right side, put some tension and just go up the middle. And I've laid my seam allowance flat like this. This is called pressing your seam open. And this is what you wanna do, scratch that, have to do for every stitch that you make. So now you're probably better starting to understand the type of relationship that you're about to form with a heating tool. So my recommendation is that you pick one that you really like, cause you're gonna be looking at it an awful lot. So to get started, this is everything you need to know for now. And with that information, we're gonna move on to an actual project, which is a napkin. Yes, I realize how basic that sounds. That's kind of the point. So first we begin at the iron, naturally, and we're gonna press in a half an inch fold, doubled. This is going to completely finish off the napkin and hide our raw edges. And please do use an ironing board, don't be like me. I don't own one, so this is what we got. And once you've done so, you will notice that your fabric now looks a little something like this. What I'm now showing you is how to create a mitered corner. I fold my corners in at the edge like so because this is what's going to allow me to get a very crisp corner once I sew in my double fold. And if this doesn't look perfect, then this is because I totally eyeballed it. So try not to judge me too harshly. And the reason that I'm doing this is because if I don't, I'm gonna be sewing through like six layers of fabric and that's too bulky. And if you are a beginner who is just already overwhelmed, you can completely skip this step. So I'm going to cut the excess fabric, which is basically along these three diamond shapes right here. Then I'm gonna fold in my sides and top stitch all the way around. And this is our napkin done. So with what you've learned today, not only can you make a napkin, but you can now technically make a pair of curtains, hem some curtains that you already have, and even a pair of jeans. You can also sew on a button and countless other projects. Now, if you guys do decide to join in on the project from today's video, feel free to tag me on Instagram and hashtag it A Between E Taught Me. I'm really curious to see what color combinations and fabric choices that you guys make. And of course, don't forget to subscribe for more.